book of Daniel chapter 10. I said something about this last night and I wanted to, to kind of express what I meant by this. Daniel chapter 10 and verse 10. It says, and behold, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. Notice what happened. Get this picture in your mind, how this, how God had an angel came and touched Daniel, set him on his knees and put him on the palms of his hands. And in verse 11, it says, he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand, someone say understand, understand the words that I speak unto thee and stand up right. Get that in your spirit. He is hunched over. He's on his palms. He's on his knees. All of a sudden, the word of the Lord says to him, understand the words, and then I want you to do this. I want you to stand upright. He said, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Verse 12, then said he unto me, fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I have come for thy words. The first day he has already heard the words. Verse 13 says, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty one or twenty days, twenty one days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now I am come, here it is again to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the last days. That means, that's not the last days of Daniel's time. It is the days that we're in, okay? Understand is the key word in this scripture. It says, for yet the vision is for many days. This is so powerful, and I want to share it with you tonight. Battles in heavenly places. I talked last, a couple Sundays ago about battle for the pulpit, there is a battle for the pulpit. Am I right, Pastor Carl? There's a battle for the pulpit. I know, I know, Brother Vernon, you know this as well. There are entities, demonic presence, trying to stop the preaching of the gospel in so many ways and so many forms. But I want to have a question when I looked at this scripture. Why would, think about this, Sister Pam, why would a demonic prince be so concerned about a prophetic revelation? What is it that triggered him? What is it that caused this demonic presence, this entity, to want to stop, to withstand Gabriel and Michael, to withstand this prophetic revela uh, revelation? Well, this is the answer. This is what I believe, because a revelation can bring a revolution. This is what I believe. God is going to give everyone in this room, my daughter, I'm telling about everybody in this room, a fresh revelation. He is going to reveal himself to you in the next coming days, and he's going to show you things to come. He's going to show you things in your personal life. He's going to show you how to make some decisions. It's God speaking to you. It's fresh revelation. And that revelation, if you will run with it, it can turn into a revolution. All right? And so you're here tonight, you're participating in this prayer and fasting summit services, whatever we want to call it, because you're committed to God. And the second is, is because you're needing a breakthrough. God put this on my heart. I said, Father, I don't know how many people are going to come. He said, don't worry about the, the number of people. You obey me. And that's what I want to do. This is another thing, uh, Sister Charlotte, Brother Vernon, you're the elders in our church. You're the pillars in our church. God is really, really speaking to me about Noah and the ark. And this is what he's saying. He said, Noah preached for all those years. Nobody would repent except his own family. And he said, it was just a few of them. And he said, this is what gets me. This is what startles me. The Bible says, God shut the door. I can't imagine churches having shut their doors but could you imagine god shutting the doors that's a different that is a different dynamic that is something we can't even fathom but there will come a time when the doors will shut and we have to be prepared and ready and say god whatever you want that's what i want 
and I'm willing to serve you all of the way. If that means um, being martyred for the cause of Jesus Christ, I'm willing to serve you. Okay? Now, I know that's some heavy stuff there, but anyway, I'm not going to go on down that tangent tonight. But I would, I, I would add this. I believe this, and I just alluded to it. God is going to unleash revelation in this room like you have never received before. I'll never forget, years ago, I was standing in a hallway with uh, Brother Gene, and I, I think you may have been standing there too, Brother Vernon, but I'll never forget this. I stood there and I said, Brother Gene, I've got to share something with you out of the scripture, out of the book of John chapter 11. I said, this is, if you'll read it, John chapter 11 is actually a parallel of the end times. And I showed him step by step, and he got so excited. I think Kevin was there as well. He got so excited. He was like, wow. Then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit fell, and a word came forth, and God began to speak through Brother Gene and said, God is going to give Gospel Lighthouse Church fresh revelation. From that moment on, we have been getting revelation from God. And so this is why I believe this tonight. This is important. Battle in heavenly places. So if this is happening then, if God is going to bring us fresh revelation, then here's some questions that I need to ask you. Are you ready for this? If you're ready, say, I'm ready. First question, are you able to hold it? Are you able to hold the revelation that God gives you? Second question, what are you going to do with it? Are you able to hold it, contain it, and what are you going to do with this fresh revelation? Let's look at the first question real quick. Are you able to hold it? Look at Jeremiah 2 and 13. It's on your screen. It says, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. Now here, this is real simple. The first, these two evils, I'm going to show you on the screen. The first evil, what was it? They forsook God, the fountain of life, the true light, and prosperity. They forsook God. God. Okay? That was the first evil. What was the second evil? The second evil is this. They hewed out broken cisterns by joining themselves to idols and idol worship. The idols have to fall. The idols have to be tore down if we truly want a great, powerful move of God. This conduct that they had, it was an excess of folly. It was an excess of blindness, spiritual blindness. And these broken cisterns that Jeremiah is, is speaking of, these are vessels. These are containers that were so poorly made that the water leaked through them. I want to know tonight, is that where the church is at right now? Have we hewn out these broken cisterns and people aren't able to contain, here it is, understand and apply the truth of God's word. Sister Charlotte came to me and you started something, Sister Charlotte, so you guys can blame Sister Charlotte if you want to. She came to me and she said, Brother JC, she said the reason, she said, she didn't get any detail, but she said, you need to pray for the congregation that they'll have spiritual understanding, that they'll have wisdom, that they'll be enlightened. This is where we're at. We need this type of move of God. So let's look at the second question. What are you going to do with this fresh revelation? What are you going to do from fresh revelation from heaven? Now listen, we got to draw the line in the sand when it comes to revelation and just speculation. Is that okay with everybody? You're quiet. The only thing that makes me preach longer is when you say, I mean, when you don't say amen. <laughs> okay? So a common problem today is this, is a spreading of misinformation. That's called speculation. That's the problem we're having. Someone may share something that happened to them, and by the time the story gets back around to them, it has drastically changed. We've all played the game where one person lines up to the other end. We may do this in the future. And then someone says something to that person, and then by the time it gets to the last person, the whole thing has changed. That has been a problem. The spreading of speculation, the spreading of misinformation. Let me show you something. Look at this next thing that I'm about to show you. Fresh revelation from God deserves careful evaluation 
with God. I want you to see that again. Fresh revelation from God deserves careful evaluation with God. The, this is where we have to stop and just say, wait a minute. What are you trying to say? Jesus said this. In Matthew 24, he says, in the last days there will be false prophets, right? He said there would be even to the point where there would be pretend Jesuses around. He said, you will know them by their fruit, right? And so what we have today is a, ramp, a rampage of deception, and it has creeped in the church. Why? Because the church is broken cisterns. There's crevices. There's, there's holes. There's cracks. There's things that are allowing misinformation to come in and pollute even dissolve some of the good intentions but to pollute and so we need to be careful careful when God gives us a special revelation I've learned this the hard way when God gives you a special revelation when he gives you something you just don't go out and tell everybody you ponder it in your heart just like Mary did you ponder it in your heart. You pray over it. You fast. You say, God, say, Lord, I've, I've seen so many visions in the last year with dealing with this sickness. I mean, I'm like, oh, Lord, what, what is it? And I'm very careful with even releasing some of the things that the Lord has been saying to me and showing me. But so there's a process. Real quickly, there's a process that takes place when we are releasing revelation. Look at Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. It's on your screen. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with what? With the knowledge of his will in all wisdom, and here you go, and spiritual understanding. Verse 10, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthen with all might according to his glorious power and to all our patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Let's show you real quick. I'm not going to spend a long time on this, but there's the process. Put that on the screen. Here are the five things. Take a picture of it. You're not going to be able to write it down, uh, but here it is. Become filled with the knowledge of God's will and wisdom and spiritual understanding. Number two, walk worthy of the Lord and to all pleasing. Number three, being fruitful in every good work. Number four, increasing in the knowledge of God. Number five, strengthen with all the might, all might according to the, uh, God's, excuse me, glorious power. This is why I say fresh revelation from God deserves careful evaluation with God, spending time with God and saying, okay, God, now let's get to the, let's get to this meat of this message in the book of Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. This is what have we read. Then he said unto me, fear not Daniel for from the first day when thou did set thine heart to understand, everybody say understand. And to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Now let's look at this. Let's look at this from a broader scope. There's a battle raging in the heavens. I'm so glad that the Barfields, Pastor Jamie and Pastor Carl posted that on, on social media because there is a battle raging in the heavens. It's happening right now. As you speak, as I speak, as you sit there, there is a battle in the heavenlies. There is an assignment. I don't know if any of you have known this. I'm sure you do, but there is an assignment from Satan for his demon generals to rule over cities. Do you know that there is demonic entities assigned to the city of Blyville? Can anybody name what some of those, you don't have to get into the Greek name or the Latin name of these demons, but one of the demons is racism. Another demon, drugs. I was, you guys remember when we lived on Terry Lane? And I was sound asleep, and all of a sudden, a demon woke me up and said, uh, I, my name is Hoodoo Wall, 
and I'm come from New Orleans. I'll never forget this. And I wanted to prove my point. And I said, I, I looked over at Crystal, and this is about two or three o'clock in the morning, and I looked over at her and I said, a demon just woke me up and told me who he was and what he's doing. And she's like, what? And I, and I went into the other room and I began to pray and I began to search the, the truth and come to find out Hoodoo Wall is a pharmaceutical demon. And when I looked Hoodoo Wall, I had never heard Hoodoo Wall in my entire life. Never heard it, never read it. And it, God, that's fresh revelation. And God revealed that to me. And then guess what? I realized there's pharmaceutical demons in this city. Okay? So, there's, there's, Satan has assigned demons over cities. When you look in Daniel's time, Satan assigned a demon general over the nation of Greece and then over the nation of Persia, which is present-day Iran. By the way, this leader of this of our country <laughs> just gave six almost what however many millions and billions or billions of dollars to iran is are are we headed to one six of persia being destroyed yes we are according to scripture okay but never nevertheless and so that's what the two in daniel's day in this scripture that's what we're reading there was one over greece and there was one over persia and one of God's chief angels was Gabriel. And it's in the scripture. You can look it up. And he was being withstood by these demonic entities. And what did Gabriel do? He had to recruit Michael the archangel. That's what, and which is one another God's chief angels to assist him. And that's what he said. He said, I heard you the first day. Pastor J.B. God has heard you the very first day. That goes back so far. When you had Cassandre as a child, as a baby, and you brought him home, and you said prayers over him, God heard you the very first day. Think of that. That is so amazing. Our mind can't fathom the importance of this scripture, how we can understand what God is trying to release to us. He heard us the very first day. All right? And so... I, I love this idea, but this is where we got to put ourselves in this picture. Because remember, where is Daniel? Daniel's kneeling down. He's on his knees and he's on his palms. And the angel Gabriel tells him, stand up. Where's the church right now? Because of COVID, because of the lockdowns, because of all the, 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 the rutkis with races and uh, the political junk that's been going on the the financial sector just going and i mean mad where's the church asleep we can't we cannot combat wokeism being and not being awake right we got to wake up you're right the church is on her knees on her palms in a place of defeat we have to stand up. And so this is how we do it. Are you ready? Ephesians 6 and 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And so there are a ton of reasons, ton of reasons why there's a battle raging in the heavens. First heaven, second heaven, whatever you want to call it. But there's a ton of reasons that there's a battle raging. But the bottom line is this. The battle that's raging is over this one thing, over the fulfillment of truth. That's why the battle's going on. The truth. God has outlined a destiny of truth for your life. And there's a battle for it. There's a battle for truth. And, that, and the, not just truth, but the fulfillment of truth. Why? Why is there a battle for truth? Well, the scripture tells us, Brother Vernon, it's the truth that makes us free. It's the truth that sets us free. It's the truth that makes us free. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, the pulling down of strongholds, casting down into imaginations every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge 
of God and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So I was, I was listening to Pastor Tim Delina today, and he said he had a large uh, university um, dean call him as a Christian college, Christian university, call him and he said, we have a problem. And Pastor Delina was saying, well, what, what's the issue? What's going on? What's the problem? And the dean of this large, major Christian university said, there is artificial intelligence, there's apps right now that is diluting the gospel. And our students are getting a hold of these apps. They're, these apps, this AI app is created by AI. It is um, leaning so far <laughs> To the point where there, it's even saying that Jesus was transgender. What is the spirit of Antichrist? Somebody quick and tell me. Anybody? Don't you read your scripture? The spirit of Antichrist is when they begin to say Jesus did not come in the flesh. Look it up, 1 John chapter 4. And so you and I know we are in the last days. And we need to be prepared. So... Spiritual resistance, put it on the screen, Caleb. Spiritual resistance requires spiritual assistance. That's why we fast and pray. So let's, look, let's end this real quick. He said in Daniel 10 and 14, he said, Now I am come to make thee understand. Someone shout understand. See, this has been a battle over understanding. He says, now I come to make thee understand what shall befall the people in the latter days. What shall happen to them? For yet the vision is for many days. Well, understanding, this is our application. To make true applications, to understand the battle in heavy places is the battle for truth. Is the battle for truth. But... <laughs> Truth will make no sense unless you understand truth. I've had marriage counselors. I've been in, been in marriage counseling, counseled someone one time for five hours, me and my wife. Lord have mercy. I said, we're never doing that again. Been in, been in, just recently, I've been in some marriage counseling with some people over the phone. Um, but... I have always said this, they tell you communication is one of the most important elements in a marriage. And I, I can't argue with that, I, you gotta communicate. But you gotta do more than just communicate. You have to understand, right? It's like if I'm sitting on the recliner and my wife says, honey, I need you to take the trash out. She's communicating to me. But if it sits there and piles up for weeks and she hits me with a frying pan, then I understand, <laughs> right? This is what's happening. God wants to bring some understanding. This is why there's chastisement. Listen, I would rather, chat, just like Daniel did, chastise this flesh than any day receive a chastisement from the Lord. That is tough stuff. Been there, done that, got a t-shirt, God help me that I'll never have to go through that again. <laughs> but I'm telling you, this is where we're at. It's to understanding the truth. Understanding the truth is to commit to follow God wherever he leads you. Commit to follow God. Whatever he says, whatever God allows, whatever he does, I'm following you, God. I'm committed to you. Look at Hosea 6, 1 and 3. Come, let us return to the Lord, for he has torn, and he will heal us. Did you hear that? What has happened and with, with the COVID and the shutdowns and the things? There has been a tear in the body of Christ. Okay? He has torn, and he will heal us. He has smitten, and he will bind us up. Why would God do these things? Because he wants us to be the bride of Christ without spot, without wrinkle. And then look at verse 2. After two days, 
will he revive us. Thank you, God. After this process, he will revive us. And in the third day, he will raise us up. And we shall live in his sight. Look at verse 3. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain of the earth. That's it. And guess what? When you follow on to know the Lord, what happens? He reveals his secrets to you. Man, that is beautiful. Psalms division 25 and 14 says, The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him, and he will show them his covenant. Listen what Daniel says about secrets. Daniel chapter 2, verse 47, King Nebuchadnezzar says, answers unto Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings, and look what it says, and is a revealer of secrets. Seest thou could reveal his secret. Oh, this is amazing. It's a biblical truth that, that, that uh, dislodges. It's biblical truth that dislodges the mindsets, that the thoughts and the strongholds that has cemented in the minds of humanity. That's why truth, that's why there's such a heavenly battle for truth. Listen, you may be here tonight, and you may be watching on this video, and you're dealing with uh, sickness. You're dealing with a financial situations. You're dealing with marital issues, relations, relational issues. You may be dealing with all kinds of mess. What you need is a breakthrough. But the breakthrough is the breakthrough of truth is what we need. We need to build, this, this word must be, it must be built on truth. It must always be built on truth. And humanity must cry out for biblical truth. We must cry out for biblical truth. Humanity, that, the church must cry out for biblical truth. I want <laughs> truth, Pastor Carl. When people come behind this pulpit, which this pulpit is very guarded, you guys know this, I want the truth preached from behind this pulpit. Not something regurgitated, not something that somebody else has said. I want to hear what God is saying to his people. Let's find us a place to pray, and let's just spend just a few moments in prayer and seeking the Lord.